There often exists confusion in the definition of cannibalism, as people confuse it with anthropophagy. Still, the larger indigo has no problems overpowering the smaller snake. Anthropophagy is the term for consumption of human flesh, while cannibalism is the act of consuming another individual of the same species as food. Eating your own kind is quite common in the animal kingdom, and snakes are no exception. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon as today we're going to talk about why snakes swallow other snakes. Let's begin. Snakes can literally eat anything, no matter what the size of their prey is. Even cows and pigs are no big deal. Sometimes they even end up eating themselves, which does sound weird. But don't worry, because we're going to enlighten you with the facts behind these weird existences. Snakes can swallow huge things because their jaws have evolved in such a way, but interestingly, sometimes they do end up eating each other. We'd like you to watch this duel between these two snakes. The bigger snake is about 4.8 meters in length, which gives it an edge over the smaller one. The bigger snake manages to bite the smaller one, but the smaller one keeps fighting until the bigger snake finally manages to penetrate its fangs in the head of the smaller ones. This comparatively mightier creature then devours upon its prey by simply swallowing it. Mostly in the wild, snakes eat other snakes out of desperation since snakes are opportunist hunters, and when the opportunity comes, they try to to seize upon that regardless of the fact what species they're hunting, especially when they're hungry. Well, that makes us claim that the saying, gluttony is a sin, is true even for the snakes. Snakes also swallow the head of their prey first. Because snakes have no limbs, they can't hold their food down to tear it apart. Swallowing the head of an animal first means that it's easier for the snake to then swallow the limbs. Once it's located the prey animal's head, the snake opens its jaws and takes the head into its mouth. Once the heart has stopped beating, they begin to eat their meal whole, toes and all. King Snake literally doesn't possess venom of any kind, yet it's mighty powerful considering the fact its opponent is still quite young and inexperienced. Guys, this young rattlesnake is going to face one hell of a challenge. Just look at the King Snake, nudging closer and closer to its prey, and as soon as the young rattlesnake moves its head slightly to the left, the King Snake seizes upon the opportunity, then wraps itself around its prey, and then starts swallowing its prey. Swallowing the prey that is larger than the size of the predator itself is not quite easy for the snake snakes, since a snake's body can accommodate for width, not length, but still it's not impossible for smaller snakes to feast upon larger, or to be precise, lengthier ones. For instance, king cobras can have an average length of 10 to 12 feet, while pythons on average can extend 15 to 20 feet, yet conquering a python is not a problem for king cobras. Look at this cobra as it was feasting upon a python when locals in the Philippines clubbed it to death. After killing the snake successfully, the locals cut the venomous predator open and found out the swallowed part of the python in the stomach. Since snakes have a tail made up of solid muscle, they can only consume other snakes of length that don't necessarily till into their bodies in a way that they maintain contact with the inner part of the tail. Likewise, the prey cannot be hanging out of their mouth, so basically it all depends upon the predator's stomach size. Snakes have this ability to consume their prey in form of a wave to pack them into the space available inside their stomach inside of consuming them in an aligned way. The anaconda will rest, digesting its catch for weeks. A capybara this size will satisfy it for months. Yet one question remains untouched, and that's why snakes bite themselves. So as claimed at the start of this video, here's the answer to that particular question. The real answer behind that question lies in one word, and that word is dumbness. But let us explain how. Snakes can attack themselves when they're overly stressed, aggressive, or hungry. It may be that the snake is confused and mistakes its own tail for prey. Snakes can bite themselves when they cannot see well, such as when they're shredding, or when they believe their tail is that of another snake. A snake may also try to bite itself if it's unwell, whether that is physically or mentally. While the act of self-cannibalism may seem absurd to humans, to a snake, it may seem entirely logical, especially if it believes
believes its tail is that of another animal. It may think the tail belongs to a predator or its prey. Another major reason behind a snake biting itself is because they may start feeling poikilothemic, which means their body temperature matches that of their surroundings. And if snakes get too hot, they can become confused and disoriented. Because their metabolisms are also temperature dependent, the animals mistakenly think they're hungry and start chowing down on themselves. So basically, temperature imbalance can cause a snake to lose its sanity. Interesting. It's quite rare that a snake ends up eating a female one, and reports and statistics show that most cases of cannibalism revolve around a male snake feasting upon another male. Female snakes do not end up feasting only female ones, but here's an interesting thing, as biologists have documented female anacondas strangling their mates after mating, likely to use as food later. Like many species where sexual cannibalism occurs, female anacondas are much bigger than males, making it easier for them to overpower their mates. Here's another interesting phenomenon. when a snake ends up spitting its swallowed prey. Well, that's because stress triggers a natural reaction in a snake, which is to relieve itself of the bulk of its meal in the event it needs to flee. In the wild, a snake would regurgitate its recently eaten food to direct energy away from digestive functions and put it toward escaping a predator. Most of the time, this phenomenon occurs when a snake feels that it's in the vicinity of an even ferocious predator. It tries to lose most of the extra weight it's carrying so it can rapidly hustle towards a safer spot, just like the way an escaping pilot during a war drops off payload to ease the weight of his or her fighter plane's engine and hence gaining speed. An adult puff adder may have enough venom to kill four to five men, and studies show severe envenomations have a 52% mortality rate and a puff adder bite can kill a human in about 30 minutes or less. Their venom can even cause tissue loss. Since snakes are always trying to feast upon other ones smaller snakes sometimes do eat out these puff adders and reduce the threat these puff adders impose on humans human beings. One species of snakes that particularly loves cannibalism is the king cobra, as eating a single competitor might indeed mean the difference between survival or securing a mating. A cobra male consumes a smaller male of the same species to reduce competition in the previously mentioned competitions. Fun fact, cobras incapacitate their prey with venomous bites, injecting a neurotoxin cocktail that paralyzes respiratory muscles, and they don't necessarily wait until their prey is dead before swallowing it. So guys, that was our take on why snakes swallow other snakes. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.